we're going to go over the specs of this watch. We're going to give you guys a um, top-down shot of this watch and give you some close-ups. I haven't yet gotten my micro lens. I should be getting that soon. And once I get that, we'll be able to get you guys some better close-up shots and give you guys a better idea of what these dials look like up close um, and in terms of these companies' um, uh, quality control. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, um, flip the camera and give you guys close-ups of this watch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we have it. Uh, this is the Parnas uh, Datejust 39 millimeters. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, give you guys a close-up of this and uh, do some quick measurements, too. It's something that I haven't been doing, and I've had these for, I don't know, for quite some time now. I picked these up real cheap, um, but I figure we, uh, we include that into the video. So here we go. This is what you get inside the box. You have a hand tag manual that they provide, which gives you irrelevant information because the information in here is about a chronograph. Yeah. Anyways, uh, two links that I had to remove from the Jubilee bracelet that is provided on this watch. Um, doesn't really give you much of adjustment in terms of uh, the links that you can replace. I think you get about three or four on each side that you can actually remove, but um, for what is worth, there you have it. We'll go ahead and throw all this back in the box and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the watch. So, so here you have it, guys. This is the uh, Parnas Datejust 39 millimeter. This has the, uh, as far as the movement that's in here, well, you know what, before we get into that, let's, uh, let's do a quick uh, measurement. Set this bad boy here to zero. There we go. And we'll measure it from side to side here. There we go. So we're getting 39.4 on the measurements there. As far as the, um, the, uh, uh, the end links, these are actually 20, it's going to be kind of hard to measure this with the, the case on, but these are actually, I mean with the uh, bracelet on, but this is actually a 20 mil, um, 20 mil on the, the end links, uh, so pretty easy to get some straps for this bad boy. This does come on a provided Jubilee two-tone bracelet, and in my opinion, I think this is a really, really, really good Jubilee bracelet. It doesn't pull hairs. Um, it's not roughly finished on the edges, so you don't feel it digging into your skin or feeling like it's going to cut you in any kind of way. It's got a nice polished finish along the side, brush along these uh, end sides of the uh, links, and then high, highly polished here with the gold tone on the center links. Uh, as far as the clasp here, so we got a pretty nice clasp here with the logo Parnas, um, with the Parnas logo, I'm sorry, it's uh, laser etched on there, and it's actually done fairly nice too. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, and you do get the push buttons here for the deployment clasp. Um, it is a mill, uh, it is a milled clasp, so you're gonna get some pretty uh, good, you know, fit. You're gonna get a good fit with this, so you're not gonna. It doesn't feel like it's gonna come off. Now, the one thing I don't really like about this um, this clasp is the lack of adjustment. So the micro adjustments that you get here, you only get three, um, which I think is, uh, you know, it's, it's for me it works, but for some folks out there it may not, so that may be a bit of a problem. But, again, for me, um, that hasn't been an issue. So, uh, yeah, um, the side, you got a nice polish along the sides here of the case, um, and there is no brush on the case whatsoever so that case besides the back so the back you do got brush on there um, you get that that Rolex style back um, screw down back you know this is this is a pretty nice watch um, let's jump into the to the into the movement that's in this timepiece here you have a Miyota um, I believe is a 80 I'll tell you right now give me one sec I believe the movement on this is the Miyota 8215. Um, it's not a bad movement. It is a cheap movement, but it's not a terrible movement. Um, in terms of the accuracy on it, um, you know, in the beginning I had a little bit of issues with it. So I opened it up and I, I, I slowed it down just a tad bit because it was moving a little fast. And right now, for the past three days now, it's been uh, it's been pretty damn accurate in terms of the rating on it you have a rating of minus 20 plus 40 seconds per day um, you do have uh, it's, it's the, the the 
the power reserve on this is a 42 hour power reserve uh, i think that's fairly accurate from what i can tell um after slowing it down i probably get an extra hour and a half out of it um the other day i noticed um you know it, it was still running and i could have sworn it was a little more than just two days that i had taken it off but um, nonetheless, you know, you get 42 hour power reserve on this. You have a vibration frequency of 21,600 uh, beats per hour. Um, yeah, you know, this is a 21, 21 joules uh, movement. It's again, it's not the best movement out there. You know, I would have very much rather have seen a Seiko NH35 in this, even though I'm sick and tired of seeing those movements in, in micro brands. But it would have been better than this Miyota that's in here. Um, and Miyotas tend to suffer from that loud rotor noise. And I'll see if I can give you a close up of what I mean on that. So see if you can hear this. I don't know if you can hear that, but. Anyways, not sure if the, if the mic can make that out, but it's a fairly um, loud rotor um, sound. And, and you also feel it too. Sometimes as that rotor is really going in and spinning, you'll notice that, uh, that you get a little bit of a wobble on that on that the, the head of the watch. Um, you do have a fluted bezel here, nicely done. Um, you know what I did like about this is, is that they didn't do... Um, I don't know if you guys seen my previous video on the GMT, the Battle of the GMTs, that that uh, Courgette GMT that I had on that video, the sapphire crystal was a part of the bezel. And, I, you know, I'm not a fan of that. And I noticed that on this one, they did not do that with this Parnas, and I'm glad they didn't do that because it's going to hold up better to the water resistant. Um, as far as the loom on this, it's not a bad loom. I think uh, for the price you get, you know, and, and again, this is a dress watch, so... You know, you can't really expect much from the loom. Um, let me see if I can give you a closer look here of that dial. Beautiful, beautiful dial. Um, the finish, spectacular. This is a sapphire crystal, too. I wish I had a, a, a tester um, to give you guys an idea of that or to give you guys a, a reassurance of that. Um, so let's test the, uh, the thickness of this watch from the bottom to the top of that sapphire let me get it off of that cyclop so you got about a 20 a 12.4 millimeter thickness which is really really nice to be honest with you that's gonna sit very very nice on the wrist um again that just looks spectacular on that jubilee bracelet now one thing i have noticed with these uh micro brands that come with these jubilee bracelets you get that worn jubilee vibe <laughs> You know, and again, these are cheap Jubilee, so they're not going to be fairly tight in terms of uh, the, the quality control on them. But um, that's not that bad for, for a watch that's under. But I think I picked this up with a coupon on AliExpress with um, their expedited shipment. Um, I must have paid, I think, like $114, 115 or something like that. Uh, so I think this was a, a, a pretty good a pretty good buy, in my opinion. Now, one of the things I do like about this Jubilee bracelet is if you look at those those end links they're solid end links but they are nicely nicely finished they fit the watch just perfect um when you if you pick one of these up you're probably going you're probably going to want to replace those spring bars because yeah it doesn't give me much confidence that that they'll hold up uh well over time um looking at this looking at this clasp i mean just look at the decoration they they, they applied there you know a small little touch but i think it's a nice touch nonetheless it, it looks nice and it, it makes you feel good about the watch um the clasp even though it's not the best looking it functions exactly how it should um and, and instills confidence once that clasp is on there you don't have to worry about this popping off unless you press those uh those buttons um but yeah there you have it guys that's the Parnas, the uh, Datejust two-tone, 39 millimeter, um, and of course we know what this is paying homage to. Um, but very nice watch. You do one thing I don't want to leave out here is you do have um, screw down or screw end links. I'm sorry, screw links. So you get these uh, screws now. The one thing I have noticed is if you could take a look at that screw right there. Uh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but that screw is coming off, and it's the second time I tighten it. So you're probably going to want to put some tight locks on these screws when you're when you're replacing these end links, um, because it, 
you know, that, 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 may, that may pose a problem. You obviously don't want this coming off your wrist um, just, just in the middle of walking because that, that sapphire is very, even though it's very strong, it shatters fairly easily. So, um, but yeah, there you have it, guys. Um, I, you know, I don't think I missed anything here. Um, if you guys... Uh, if you guys maybe notice I missed something, put it in the comments below and uh, and uh, share with everyone else. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really good buy. I'm going to go ahead and put the link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, guys. Um, so if you decide to purchase one, use the link below. It doesn't cost you any extra, um, but it definitely helps the channel out. Um, oh, there is one more thing I wanted to cover here. So this is a screw-down crown. Um, so... That's going to add to the water resistance of this watch. I don't recommend wetting it or, or taking it out swimming, but I can tell you that, in, you know, I, I've washed my hands with it. I've showered with it and haven't had any issues. Um, take, take a listen to how, how crunchy those gears are. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, it screws on pretty good. I haven't had any issues with it binding like most micro brands. Uh, in fact, the Courgette that I reviewed last, that was one of the issues I had. It was just binding even while trying to wind. And this one just smooths the, uh, it, it screws on very smooth. Uh, the magnifier is not bad. It's going to, you know, serve its purpose even though it has a ton of glare. But again, for a watch under 100 bucks, you can't beat that. Um, so, yeah. There you have it, guys. Um, that's my take on the uh, Parnas. In, in, in my book, I would highly recommend picking one of these up. If you don't already have a dress watch, I think this is a really, really good buy. Um, and I think you'll really enjoy wearing this watch. Um, I've gotten a few compliments while, while wearing this watch. And, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, please smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button as it does help the channel. Um, and the, and the uh, notification icon so you're notified as these videos uh, comes out in the future. Um, I do have another review I want to do um, on the Courgette, uh, the Courgette GMT. I'm going to do a hands-on review on that one. I'm probably going to take my time with it because I want to be able to, to have it a little more structured than what I've been doing lately and, and hopefully give you guys something a little bit better in terms of the quality, the content. Um, but, yeah, again, thank you guys for the support. Till the next one.